Hello, it's Sandy again from SpectrumNoir.com. Today we're going to be looking at doing some underwater scenes using the Spectrum Aqua Tints, um, which are the um, liquid watercolour um, paints. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to create um, an, a, an underworld envi underwater environment. So I've done you a couple of different examples here. So we're going to be looking at doing um, a card very similar to, to this background. Um, and the, this background can be used with your um, digital mermaid stamps. Um, the other example I've got for you is using a little fish. Um, and the last one is a bit more quirky. So I found this little digi hidden on my computer somewhere with the little goldfish with a little Santa's hat on. Um, and I've added a couple of bubbles um, with a little dobs of white gel pen just to show you the range. So we can. So it's really up to you um, what sort of environment. This one's a bit close to the surface of the water so it's a, a lot lighter. Uh, and we've kept the, the teal blue colour going on. Whereas this one's a little bit further down. Um, so we've got some, some seaweed and some, some little foliage bits coming up. Um, for our mermaid and her little seahorse. So, um, and this this example is a bit darker still um, and quite, quite down deep um, in the ocean with some, some real little characters going on here, so little fishes swimming in and out. So the colours I'm going to be using um, are from the Bright and Beautiful box, um, as I'd said. We've got number 30, which is the yellow, 21... Um, which is this lovely vivid green and then we've got my favourite which is 06 and that's the teal and finally we're going to be using um, some of number 56 which is this glorious really sumptuous purple um, and although we're underwater the purple, we're going to use the, the, the purple to show that mixing these colours is really really um, easy to do and we can create our own new colour palette um, by doing that right so what we're going to need is we're going to need some um, it's an A6 sheet of Crafters Companion card um, it's 300 GSM and as I said in my, my previous video this allows me um, some real weight to the card that allows us to get some some real water effects going on and I don't have to worry too much about how much water I'm putting on um, which is great for me um, so we're going to start with that and I've already put my colours into um, the base tray that comes with them um, and pipetted them out of the bottles. There are instructional videos um, on spectrumnoir.com on exactly how to, to set yourself up. Okay, so they're the four colours that I've got. So we're going to start by wetting our brush. And we're going to have this this um, fan brush first. Um, this really is a real cheap one. Um, it's actually a nail art brush, um, and it's a very 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 fine fan brush. Um, because what we're going to do is we're going to go straight dry brush straight into our yellow, and we're going to sweep across because that's where I want my light source coming from. Um, for the for the whole picture, so we're going to sweep across with some yellow, and you see that the, the fan brush really comes into its own because it really does peter out into these really thin thin strokes. Okay, so let me clean that off because we'll need that later. Um, I'm going to get a little bit of tissue. Just soak up some of the water off there, off my, and give it a quick little blast with the heat gun. There we go. Um, my heat gun is um, very, very old and very, very noisy, so I really hope that you can hear me over it. So we've we've now got a light source, and that's going to give us some direction with the rest of it. So we're going to take um one of my favorite brushes um it's, it's the flat brush from crafters companion um it's available on their website and it's it's the thin flat brush um that we're going to be using and we're going to wet it and take some of that water off um, and then we're going to go in and get some of our teal on the brush and we're going to take that right across 
the bottom, I'm trying to mind the camera, um, I have moved the camera angle this time over so the camera's on the other side because I'm right handed um, and I know that someone had um, commented last time so thank you very much for your, for your feedback and I hopefully I've moved it enough so that you can see. Now you can see what I've been doing there is I'm literally taking the colour starting at the bottom with this so I get a dark strip and then using the same colour and taking it up through the yellow and getting water on my brush and dragging that colour out so it naturally fades into the yellow. Now you'll see that from the yellow we originally did the strokes are still there, very very finely still there and the yellow itself has naturally turned into this fabulous green colour which we've created just by taking the teal up through through the yellow. Don't have to be straight strokes we can get some some movement going on in there if we want. Okay so I'm just going to give that a quick blast with this very 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 noisy old heat gun and um, put glass from the back. Out, burn one pan. Okay, and I'll take that off. Right, so we've now got this where we've got some green. And you'll see here that was from the water from my fingers, but actually that's exactly where we're going to be going in a second. So we're going to take a bit more of the teal, now it's dried, um, so, that it's, so we've part sealed it, it is watercolour so it will move but we have started to part seal it and we're just going to add a bit more depth down the bottom here and then we'll really clean our brush off well when we go back round and bring it in from the sides so you've got that little bit of a movement going on. Um, and don't worry about these strokes up here because we can easily take them out by doing exactly what we did last time and starting to drag those out. So we've now got, sort of got three depths of water for our undersea and we've made this natural green colour at the top just by dragging up the faded out teal. So we can swing that round and there we go. Now what we're going to do now is we're going to take a piece of normal kitchen roll and we're going to add, just just blobbing it on, so we're actually going to take out randomly, wherever wherever you feel like, um, these marks down the bottom here are actually my nails indenting into the watercolour card, but it really doesn't matter because we'll hide them later um, and my nails desperately need doing. So there we go. Dry that off a bit. So we've started to get this, this idea of the sea going on. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go in with a bit of the green from the set and we're going to go across the bottom. Because mixing in with the blue, we're going to create just a little bit of a darker colour, a bit more of the teal. Um, so that just slightly over with the teal, so you're going to go slightly over that green so we can drag that teal back out to where we had it, completely clean, clean the brush and blend that back in. There we go, and while that's wet we're going to go back in with our, our cloth and because we took some off last time, the depths of colour in areas like you can see here where I took some of the colour off the depth of colour is changing when, when I put a new layer on. So although you can't instantly see what you what the effect is, is actually probably not so good on the camera, but you will be able to see in person actually what you're creating there. So right, so we've now got we've now got this this scene going on. Um, and we're gonna look to add 
some a little bit more detail so that we can start getting the bottom give us some definition to the bottom of our C. So I'm going to take a little blob of the green and we're just going to come in from the sides so that we can just create a wave of, a wave effect if you like and a little bit more of the blue just a tiny blob of the blue so we've just got this movement of where we'd washed it out and we'd made it a little bit too sterile a little bit too um, man-made if you like so I want to give it a little bit more character back so we're just going to go back over it with our water and then we're going to take it back off so we're giving it a good old and that one's much better. You see the brilliance of walking, working with the watercolours is that if you don't quite like the, the, the colour you can go back in and change it slightly um, and that's why we're using the 300 GSM. So right, get my shadow off the mat um, and right now we're going to dry it because we're going to move to the next piece um, of our technique is starting to add in some of that atmosphere. So you've seen that, I mean obviously with this dark one is I'm not going for the top of the water, I'm actually showing you how to do the full technique with um, the seaweed at the bottom. So I really need to get this bit dry so I can go in with the seaweed. And I burnt my hand doing that last time so we won't do that. Because I learned the lesson. Right, so we now need to get some some depth and some foliage going on at the bottom. Um, this will never be the same um, every time you do it because it is a fluid, natural thing and I really like that about it. So what we're going to do is we're going to go in with the green, just straight with the green, um, with the, just a rounded brush. Again, this brush from, is from the Crafters Companion website. Um, and we're going to look at doing some ferns. So I'm going to go in with the green first because just the green because I want you to get used to how wet your brush needs to be because this colour is so the same as what we're doing means that you can easily remove it. So it's about how how dry you need your brush before you go into the to the green and then just get used to the feel of that brush by putting these strokes in. So you're looking at just, it's a flicking motion that we're doing. It really is just a flick. So you take some of that off if, if, you've, got, if you've got too much on and you really are just flicking up. Much the same you do with, with hair, with your mark for hair strands when you're doing your markers. The more you twist and turn your brush, the different shape you're going to get if any of you have sort of done your art journals you're journaling with um, calligraphy strokes it's very very similar so you're, you're going in and you can twist and turn it and it will alter the depth of what's going on you can wiggle it a bit and we'll get some strokes going on up here as well give it the idea of movement up and now what we're going to do is we're going to put some green on my mat and I'm going to do it this side so that hopefully you can see that um, and then I'm going to go in and I'm going to get some of the um, teal blue and I'm actually going to put it next to it and you can see now that, by, that what, we're going to be do, what we can do is we can drag those colours and mix them in together. I'm going to get a bit more green, I'm going to dry that off, a bit more green and put that there so that we can now start to get a slightly different colour green that we can then, that's too wet, which we can, so I've just dried that back off on my flannel. Um, so we can now start to see a little darker colour coming in. Um, and you'll see here that what I've created by going, when I went in with the green and then overlaid with the teal on our second layer, what we were doing was creating these little shelves back here. Um, so what we need, what we want to be doing is to get a bit of this, the, the darker colour mixed in with our teal and just go in and create a few strands that originate from there so that you've got depth, we're looking through, now they'll be much smaller 
because obviously they're further away from us. So we're just going to put in a few little strands. And now what we're going to do is, is, as I said to you before about the purple, is now we're going to put the purple next to our dark green that we've already made with the teal, which is a really, really vivid purple and it's a bit scary. So what we're going to do is dry our brush back off. Um, I'm going to add a bit more teal because I'm running out of enough to show you. There'd probably be enough on my mat um, for me, but and a bit more green. Um, because I want to be able to show you dragging the colours out. So now we're going to add some of this really, really vivid purple to our teal green mix so that we've created a much, much, much darker colour now with some real depth. So in these backgrounds, just a little tiny bit, just to give um, some a sense of depth. And if you can go underneath, we need to ground these. So we just need a few little strokes underneath, a few little bits. And what I'll do is I'll come in in a moment um, when I've got a clean brush and um, I'll clean those, but blend those in. So now we're gonna go with our dark color right to the foreground um, and we're gonna, gonna flick up. So we're just still, not too many, that's too wet. So keep drying your brush off if it's too wet because we want to be doing it with a, a, a dry-ish brush. So every so many strokes that you do, you're going to need to be taking that water back off because the aquatints themselves are already fluid. So obviously they're going to be adding water every time you pick them up to your brush. So you want to keep, keep cleaning it so that it's not too water heavy. I'm just gonna I'm going straight in with the purple over the top because it will blend on the paper in some places so you literally just you, you're looking at what you're doing and you're creating your own color from the teal the green and the purple um, which now once you start to see it building up on the page isn't as scary as it sounds and it's watercolor you can always um, tone these colors down by going back over the top with a clear water brush, just a clean brush. And we're trying to create, I mean, we're gonna go bring it over there so we've got some different movement going on with these. And then coming in from the corner, just so that we can create that depth into the corner. And the reason we wanna create depth at either side is so that we've got you training an eye into the piece, into the design. So the, the corners will always be um, a little bit darker with the ink. Um, that's why a lot of, you know, why we just dress around the edges of, of pictures um, and mats and mats and layering when we're, we're adding things. And that's because we want to drag people's eye into the design. It's exactly the same when you're, you're painting a scene. Um, creating feeling like this um, and again so we just want to drag the eye in so I'm going to go back with a little bit of teal and green so we're just going to go back over the top where it's a little bit dark for and I want to just blend that out a little bit and you'll see there that it's just it's just toning it down a tad blending it down a little bit bit of straight purple there. I keep putting my hand in the white. And I want a bit more green. And I'm going to take that over the top there because that's better. There you go. So you can see. Now the other thing you can do is you can take a much smaller fine detailed brush um, and you can go in Okay, it's teal and purple I've gone into and you can go in and very gently add some finer strokes coming off some of the pieces that you've got. It's quite hot under the light so the purple on my glass mat is actually starting to dry. Which gives you some indication of how quickly it dries but it is quite hot under the light. So we can go back in and we can add just some little strokes where we've um, watered them back 
So by watering them back, what we've actually done is gave us the ability to be able to create some depth. So we've got a water, we've got the, the pale green layer, then we've got the medium layer, and now we're going in with just some small, small little, little bits over the top. So we've actually now created another layer. That's where I went over it with the water. And again, I quite like this disturbed water look um, because when you're talking about doing the ocean, it's never going to stand still. So it's always going to have a sense of movement. So learning to talk while you're painting is a skill. Right, so I quite like the effect I've got going there. Um, so what I want to do is I now want to just want to change those two bits there, um, as I'd said. So what we need to do, so I'm going to go in and get some more green because all my green's quite yucky and quite dark now from the teal and the purple. So I'm just going to get a little bit of green. I'm going to clean off my drama brush off um, and just going to go underneath it and we're just going to tone that colour down a little bit. So we're going to blend it back in but keep it dark. Just a wiggly very technical term in, in the terms of art, a little wiggly motion so that we can just drag out that dark colour. So I've got my green back on but now I'm back in with a water, just water on my brush, going back in, taking some of that paint and just blending it back into the background. So my brush is just water, there's nothing else on there, it's just water. And I'm literally dragging out, even though I did this a while ago, so it's technically dry, because it's watercolour, we can reactivate it when we go in. And we can just literally move that around a little bit. And you can see it's just a wiggle movement. Dry that brush off. Just a wiggle movement, just to get that moving around. And I'm just going to go back over the top and try and put it some couple of fine lines in. There. There we go. So I think what we've managed to achieve there is, is some real depth going in to our picture. So now what we, is because it's all a bit stayed um, and a bit steady looking, so we're just going to go in and we're just going to put in some water drops. Not much and because this is watercolour it will come off quite quickly. Um, so I've got a clean piece of kitchen kitchen towel this time so I don't want to transfer any colour from last time and we're just going to take that back off so we've now created some bubbles going on and again just a couple more it doesn't matter if they're bigger but and we want to get them off quite quickly because we don't want to go through too many of the layers of paint that we've already got on there and however you want to do this really it's you know it's this is your design and again because we're splattering water every time you do it it's going to be different and every time you do it you'll think oh I wonder if I could do that and I wonder if what, what would happen if I do that so you'll add and change and so I'm just gonna use a again water just water on this brush just to move this around a little bit because I don't quite like it and you can do that, it's a great technique. So just move it back out and the last thing we're going to do to the background is go back with our really detailed fan brush um, and um, I'm just going to straighten mine out a little bit so it doesn't fold up. Mine's curling a little bit, there you go. Um, just so I can do this so that the camera can see. Fan brush back in the yellow and we're going to add those sun strokes back in. I've taken some right down and some of the stronger ones are staying at the tops because that's where I'm starting. And then we can take our fan brush, just water, so we're just going to wet it and we can go back over the top just to tone that down a little bit. We don't want to go too far and the other thing that you can then do is go in with the green on the fan brush just to add some green back over the top because then you've got the water. We're going to hold it just there and I'll be back in a second once I've cleaned my mat to show you how we put this together. Okay so mine's now fully dried 
Um, and what I've done is I've laid it up onto um, black card and then onto our A6 um, tent fold card. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how I did that. That's the one that we, we've been doing to, in today's tutorial. But I've got another one here that I did earlier on today. Um, and you'll see, again, every single one's going to be different. So I'm going to get my trusty cutter um, and I'm going to be trimming down to 13.5, so 13 and a half centimetres across this long edge. So what I tend to do is sort of you look at the, the piece of work and see where you can take bits from. Is there any areas that you're not quite happy with? So I'm going to take a little bit off the top and a little bit off the bottom. So I know how much I've got to work with by making sure that this ends always over the 13.5. I'm going to take that little piece off, turn him round, you see now I've sort of looked at this piece and I've taken that piece off there. So we're now going to put this back on and measure to 13.5 and take the top off. So got a little bit less of the sun going on there. Um, and the side measurement across here needs to be 9.8, 9.7, 9 9.8. 9 um, so and again, you're going to look for areas where you think you can can best take that from your design. So I'm going to go a little bit off both sides again, just because this one's pretty even. So we're going to go to nine and a half, and my cut has got the increments, so it's got the millimetre increments, so we're going to go up and we're going to make that 9.8 and take that across. I will put the measurements um, up on the blog post with, with the video, so if you go to spectrumnoir.com there it will be. I've already cut the black piece and the measurements for the black needs to be 14 centimetres this way and 10.3 this way um, and this is the Crafters Companion uh, Matte Black card, it's 300 GSM and it's my favourite um, and I use a lot of black card um, in my work as you'll see on my own blog. Um, because it's got this really deep, deep colour, it's quite, really quite sumptuous, no shine at all. Um, so our white, our piece of watercolour now fits on, if I've cut it straight, which I haven't. So we're going to measure that up, and that's just to, yeah, it's the black that's not straight, just to show you that we can all make small errors so I'm going to go back to my black and that's not straight so we're going to straighten up that edge I want to straighten those edges up just make sure that that's okay all the way around we're going to check this one make sure it's not this one and this is again this happens to all of us I'm sure it happens to you as well so it's this edge that's actually slightly out so I'm going to take a tiny piece more off there just so I can straighten this edge cutting on camera that's what happens sooner or later you're going to make a live mistake because that's what happens so we're now going to map that onto the black like so I'm going to get rid of my cutter um, mine's now a little bit thinner than it should be because I made that error but hey ho on we go. So we've got our cards. I'm going to use the Collal All Purpose Glue. You can find this on the Crafters Companion website. Um, what this glue is particularly brilliant for um, when using watercolour card is the watercolour card, obviously, when you use a wet glue, will get will, will start to soak up that wetness and start to warp and bubble. So I've found that by using this one, it actually creates a layer uh, of glue underneath it. Um, that almost creates a, a, a you know, sheet um, effect. So it actually becomes a part of both and seals them together absolutely brilliantly. But it gives me a little bit of a wiggle room, which is just cool. There we go. So he's on, nice and flat. And then we're going to take our collar again and we're going to put it onto the back of the black. Really simple. And as I said, I will put check that our card is tenfold that way um, I will put the measurements up on this site so you've got them up on the blog post on spectrum 
www.ellenbarnes.com. So we're going to press that down. And you'll see that I've got more of an edge at the top and at the bottom. That's why I've given you these specific me measurements, because what that then does, by having the thinner at the sides, is, is to draw us into the picture, which is really what we want. We were trying to create by doing the edges darker. And there you go. That one's all matted and layered. Um, the, the measurements for the inside matting and layering are exactly the same. Um, there's the one that we've been painting along with today. Same top and bottom, as you can see the black framing that perfectly. No shine so it's not taking away from your design. Going back to the three um, examples I've done you at the beginning, um, you can see that I've used the colour wash technique that we, we learned at the beginning um, by starting with the teal, fading that out with a clean brush, starting with the yellow, fading that out with the clean brush um, so it creates this third colour in the centre. Um, so that now matches um, the front of our card and so I've done the same with all of these. Um, there are tutorials on this, this colour wash um, on the blog so you can go back and check um, or watch the beginning of this again um, if you've got any, dif any difficulties. So here's the one that we made today and the colours that we use from the Aquatints range which are available on the Crafters Companion website was number 56 which is this gorgeous purple, 30 which is this yellow, 21 is the green and 06 is the, the teal and they're from the bright and beautiful, bright and beautiful set of 6 aqua tints from Spectrum Noir. So that's that's it, that's me, that's um, Sandy all finished um, from Fairytale Daydream for Spectrum.com.